So we're going to look at the uh, aggregate demand curve. Um, if you remember, components of aggregate demand, you've got aggregate demand equals consumption plus investment plus government expenditure plus exports minus imports. Now, uh, for AQA exams, um, you get multiple choice and often you're forgetting about the importance of that minus import. So to do bear that in mind and do remember that in terms of the figures, that obviously if imports go up, then aggregate demand goes down. The other thing that tends to trip you up is that you uh, are asked a question, um, uh, given the information that Britain's exports maybe have gone into decline and our imports have gone up, and what's the impact on aggregate demand? Unfortunately, too many students get this confused with a budget deficit, which is not what we're looking at here. Budget deficit would be maybe government spending beyond the tax revenue raised. So we're not dealing with that. We're talking about the export of goods and services from Britain uh, in terms of you know, manufactured items with services like our pharmaceutical industry, our legal services, our financial services being exported abroad. Uh, and people, of course, coming to Britain on holiday is, uh, is an export uh, as well. Uh, imports, we're talking about imported components, raw materials, food. But imports is also a question of people going away on holiday. So we're looking at a growing trade deficit typically for Britain. Now, what does this mean for aggregate demand? Well, we can see that with imports going up, uh, this will shift aggregate demand inwards. And with exports going down, it's going to have the same impact. So what we can see in terms of a, an aggregate demand diagram is what is going to be the impact on the general price level on inflationary pressures, and what's going to be the impact in terms of real economic growth. So looking at the short run scenario, what we can see is uh, with aggregate demand shifting inwards to the left, that we will get lower inflationary pressures, a lower average general price level, and we'll also achieve a witness a lower level of real GDP. Beyond six months, we're talking about recession there. But what's the practicalities of that? Why is, you know, what's going on there? Well, you have to think about it. In terms of imports, um, maybe with, with more money leaking out of the economy, in terms of the circular flow of income, um, then that would be one reason why maybe the, the, the national income of the economy is shrinking. Um, another reason could be that people maybe are buying imports uh, instead of domestic products. So again, we might see shops having to cut back, maybe British domestic shops closing. And of course, with exports going into decline, that will mean uh, less national output um, as our British exporting companies are not manufacturing as much. It might mean job losses, so we might see again less decline, a decline in uh, the profits and the wages of British export companies. Um, and also in terms of uh, just general national expenditure. So we've got a lower level of GDP. In terms of inflationary pressures, well, what's going to be happening here is why is there an increase in imports? It might be those imports are cheaper. So it could be in that case um, that simply, you know, British domestic companies are thinking about being more price competitive. Some will maybe cut prices, some might not increase prices by as much. So on average, the price level will be lower. Uh, if we think about export companies, why are they declining? How are they going to deal with that? Again, they might look at possibly curbing their price increases or maybe again cutting uh, the prices of what they export. So that's the overall picture. The next step is what can we do about it? And um, in terms of one of the issues that have been more recently witnessed for Britain in the last few years, the last three years, uh, so 2008 to, to um, sorry, 2009 to 2012, um, is interest rates. So the Bank of England have had interest rates at 0.5%. At AS level, for reasons we don't need to get into, this has meant that we have seen a weaker pound. And if you remember the uh, idea of spiced, strong pound, imports cheaper, exports dearer. Well, here we've got weaker pound, so the imports could be dearer. So 
Assuming demand for our imports is price elastic, that means the overall um, value of imports decline, you know, less is being spent in total on our imports, so less money is leaking out in terms of imports. And in terms of uh, a weaker pound, exports will actually be cheaper now. So again, assuming that people will buy British exports based on price, maybe a big assumption, maybe it's more about quality, but let's go with it. Say demand is price elastic, cheaper British exports because of the weaker pound would mean that the overall value of UK exports will increase in terms of you know hundreds of millions of pounds we're exporting what's more being injected into the economy. So these movements will actually improve our economy, will shift that aggregate demand back upwards and we'd also hope to see a decline in our trade deficit. It doesn't always work out that way, there are always other things changing elsewhere in the world. Uh, in terms of who's going to buy our exports, is the rest of the world uh, still in recession? Uh, in terms of will we buy less imports, uh, again there's other questions there as to why are people buying imports? Is it just a case of prices? What's happening with inflation in other countries? What's happening with their exchange rates in other countries? It becomes a more complex picture. But these are the key areas that you need to be aware of. And don't ever confuse a trade deficit with a budget deficit. Thank you.